This is not the first time Master Andranik is bringing light to dark hallways, but it is his first time working in a hospital. This particular hallway leads to the surgery room. As usual, the seasoned electrician is hard at work to make sure the system will work perfectly. We were expected to do a three-star job, but if I may say so myself, the work we've done is worth five stars. I've always believed that one must work with conscious. Caution should go hand in hand with conscious, Andra Nikolabian adds, referring to the dangerous nature of his work. As he handles wires with high voltage power flowing through them, he needs to be focused at all times. There can be no distractions. Now here we've got two wires, but elsewhere, for instance, when dealing with an electronic switchboard, there might be a hundred wires. You need to tell them apart, wire by wire and group by group, so you won't end up making the wrong connection. Master Andranik loves his job, despite its dangers. When he was still a teenager in his native Damascus, he spent hours trying to understand how electricity is conducted through colorful wires. His childhood curiosity was to be transformed into a profession. I went to the college in Yerevan. I graduated from the Polytechnic in 1979. Afterwards, I went back to Syria, then returned to Armenia, where I married my wife. She's from here. After they got married, Master Andranik and his wife went to live in Syria. He worked for the armed forces in Damascus. Back in 2010, there were no hints of a looming war. But in his heart, Master Andranik knew that it was coming. Nobody believed him. They said, come on, nothing will happen in Syria. The government is too strong. Andranik returned to Armenia with his wife and seven-year-old son. Two years later, civil unrest exploded in the streets of Damascus. Master Andranik was glued to the television and kept calling his family in Syria. Then, one morning, his sensitive heart told him to go see a doctor. It was a Monday. I went for a checkup and it turned out that I had had a silent heart attack. How was I going to pay my medical bills? As I lay unconscious before the surgery, Outside, my sister and wife were worried sick about where to get the money for the hospital. Master Andranik's arteries were blocked. His wife and sister were told that he needed emergency surgery. So it turned out that I had had a heart attack, but I couldn't afford to pay for the surgery. Well, the financial issue was taken care of within two hours, thanks to the Hayastan All-Armenian Fund. I pray every day for those wonderful individuals who rushed to my help and saved my life. <laughs> Master Andranik had a short hospital stay. He was in good hands. He says that while his heart is working well, he's still careful not to be on his feet for too long. Today, he has decided to leave work an hour early, particularly since his wife is home alone. <coughs> Divine blessings appear above the door. Inside the living room, there are photos of the Halabians, 14-year-old son, while scripture cards in Armenian and Arabic grace the table. <laughs> The Halabians have also brought family albums with them from their home in Damascus. Mrs. Gayane has fond memories of her 18 years in Syria. Among her lasting impressions is something a Syrian woman had told her in a market. Are you Russian? She asked. And I said, no, I'm Armenian. She pointed at her head and said, we salute you. If the war ends, the Halabians have no intention of either returning to Damascus or moving elsewhere. Armenia is the center of the world, they say. There's nothing for us outside Armenia. At the end of our interview, Mrs. Gayane expresses her blessings for the benefactors of the Hayastan All-Armenian Fund. She says it was the human hands of God that saved her husband's life. We're grateful to all those who are helping Syrian-Armenian patients. Thank you.